I'm the Kentucky Hillbilly with Tim's Wildlife Control and Bluegrass Wilderness Living and Self-Reliance. Uh, today we're going to be making some bait. Uh, what we've been using for the ADC line uh, in the summer, months, whatever, when it ain't freezing out, it's just a can of uh, uh, fish cat food thrown in the back of the trap or in the bottom of the dog-proof trap. Uh, can't even use it in your dirt holes or whatever, it works fine. Uh, what all we also use just a can of sardines. If you saw the video before this, uh, you, would, you would see that we take the oils from inside the can and spread it out as a trail scent. So what we're going to do whenever we make this, we're going to take the oils out of here first, put the oils into a separate container, and then make our mixture of, um, of bait. So that way we can still have our bait and we can still have our trail scents. Um, what we're going to also put in this, we're going to put in some honey for coon attracted. Um, and also to moisten this up a little bit, instead of just using water, we have some clam juice. Uh, really great for trapping around streams where you have a whole bunch of freshwater clams. Uh, here in Kentucky, you go through the creeks and there's just freshwater clams everywhere. So make it smell a little more natural to them too. They'll like that. Uh, we're not cooking this in this uh, sterno set right here. We're just warming it up, trying to get all the mixture together. Uh, also, after we get all this put together, we are going to throw some glycerin in here, which is an antifreeze, and it is a slight uh, preservative, but we're also going to throw some sodium benzate in it also, just to make sure that it's not going to rot on us while we're out on the trail. Uh, not that we're going to make enough to where it's going to rot on us. We have these small jars that we're going to be filling, uh, so we can just take a little bit out with this at a time and throw the rest of the bait freezer over here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, Hope you all enjoy watching this video. Okay, now we got it to a lukewarm pace. Uh, all the smells and scents are mixed together now into one solid smell. Uh, it smells like bait to me. Uh, now's the time we're going to go ahead and winterize it. We're going to add uh, some of our glycerin. And I freeze. And just basically eyeball it all. Some of that in there. Remember we got five cans of fish in here. Three cans of fish, two cans of cat food, fish flavor. Five cans of fish. All right, now we're going to add our preservative, keep it from rotting on us. And I'm going to add just this soup spoon. Maybe a little more than that. Try two. That's better. You want the sodium benzate to saturate everything in there. So whenever you pick out a spoon of it, before all this stuff dissolves, it's just speckled with sodium benzate. If you take a spoon, slop it down, cut it in half, you want it to be inside and out speckled with sodium benzate. All this is going to all this is going to dissolve after about 24 hours and this is going to be preserved. So, go ahead and stir this up. Um, another thing that what I do what if you all might like to think about doing if you all are going to start making a bunch of baits on your own is naming your baits. Um, I named this bait TWC's Coon Catcher, TWC Tim's Wildlife Controls uh, Coon Catcher. Uh, the reason why there's a bunch of names for a bunch of different baits and why I didn't just write coon lure on here is because I make a lot of different types of coon lures. And you know you can tell by the side of it but it's just easier looking up and seeing you know, what's written down on there so you know what baits you're using for what set. Some of the baits that I make do resemble each other. And um, being able to just pick it up out of my bag and look at the name and re remind me about what's in it and what type of coon lure this is. So this is TWC Coon Catcher that we're making now. Whenever you make it up, name it whatever you want to, just to remind you of what's in it and what this bait is uh, to help you on the line. But we're going to stir this up and get it in the jars. Okay, I added a little bit more 
sodium benzate in there, or not sodium benzate, excuse me, glycerin in here. I like my bait when I know it has enough glycerin in it is when it gets glossy. See that shine on it? it means sodium, that means the glycerin's on there good. We don't want any of this to freeze no more. We don't put enough of it in and it's just going to freeze up on us and we did all of this for nothing. So whenever it starts getting that glossy look to it, take your spoon, pull some back, let it sit. If what you pull back has got the glossy look, you've got enough glycerin in there. Uh, look in here too, all these little white dots is sodium benzate. And that's how you want it. You want every time you move off a spot, it's just speckled with sodium benzate to keep it from, keep it from rotting on you. Um, after about 24 hours, um, all these little dots from the white dots from the sodium benzate is going to dissolve and you're not going to see that anymore. But we're going to go ahead and get the coon catcher put in the jars. <laughs> about 50 cents, can of sardines 50 cents, so uh, we had five cans, so about two dollars and fifty cents. We now have five cans bait and one bottle of trail scent. So I believe that's a pretty good idea. I didn't include the price of the sodium benzate and all that, but uh, glycerin, but you're going to use that for any bait that you make. Uh, go ahead, make place you an order on FNT's uh, trading outposts for a gallon of glycerin, and get go ahead and get you a gallon of sodium benzate. Uh, this is just one of my pint-sized ones. Go ahead and get you a gallon, though, if you're interested in bait making, because you're going to use a lot of it during the winter time. Uh, but this is this is on what you can do to go ahead and help you catch you some coons. So you ain't got to worry about your bait freezing over. But either way, this is a great bait. Uh, for self, you know, self-reliance and uh, you know, sustainability, this is great. Don't matter what you catch. If I'm starving, if I ain't got no food and I catch a huge possum, you better believe I'm gonna eat that possum. If I ain't got no food and I'm starving and I catch a cat, you better believe I'm using it as bait to catch something else. I ain't eating no cat. <laughs> I'm American. <laughs> uh, thank you all uh, for uh, tuning in and watching me how to make this bait. I'm going to have another video coming up shortly on how to make good predator bait. I uh, don't know if y'all can see these black bags over here, but they're full of uh, random parts of different animals that we're going to cube up and grind up and make some predator bait on here in a minute. So stay tuned. Uh, like us, share us, uh, subscribe if you'd like to go ahead and get our videos straight to you. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, thank you for viewing and keep your nose in the wind.